Oh, come on, clap those hands with us. Come on. Clap your hands, come on, clap your hands, come on. In the sanctuary, <coughs> clap your hands. In the sanctuary, I'm gonna say it. We lift our hands, come on. Lift our hands, lift our hands to the sanctuary. Lift our hands, lift our hands to give you the glory. We lift our hands, lift our hands to give you the praise. And we will pray. We will praise you for the rest of our days. Yes, we will praise you for the rest of our days. Oh, come on, praise him, come on. We clap our hands, clap our hands in the sanctuary. Clap our hands, clap our hands to give you the glory. We clap our hands, clap our hands to give you the praise. And we will, and we will praise you for the rest of our days. Yes, we will praise you for the rest of our days. We clap our hands, we clap our hands in the sanctuary. We clap our hands, clap our hands. We clap our hands, clap our hands to give you the praise, and we will praise. We will praise you for the rest of our days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We will praise you for the rest of now, our days. Come on, clap those hands. Come on, clap. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. We sing our song. We sing our song in the sanctuary. Sing our song. We sing our song to give you the glory. Sing our song. Sing our song to give you the praise. We will pray. And we will praise you for the rest of our days. Yes, we will praise you for the rest of our days. We sing our song. Sing our song in the sanctuary. Sing our song. Sing our song. Sing our, song. Sing our song to give you the praise, and we will pray. We will praise you for the rest of our days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We will praise you for the rest of our days. One more time, more praise and praise and praise. Come on and praise him. Do you have a song? Sing your song. We do our dance. Come on. We do our dance in the sanctuary. Do our dance. We do our dance to give you the glory. We do our dance. We do our dance to give you the praise. We will pray. And we will praise you for the rest of our days. Yes, we will praise you for the rest of our days. We do our dance. Do our dance in the sanctuary. Do our dance. Do our dance to give you the glory. We do our Jesus, we give you the praise. Emmanuel, we lift up your name. Heavenly Father, we give you the praise. Heavenly Father, come in the sky. Come in the sky. And we will praise you for the rest of our days. Yes, we will praise you for the rest of our days. Hallelujah. Hallelujah in the sanctuary. Hallelujah, we give you the glory. Hallelujah! Hallelujah in the sanctuary! 
Everybody say yes, everybody. Yes, everybody. Yes, Lord, for the rest of our day. Yes. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, for the rest of our day. Say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. For the rest of our day. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. For the rest of our day. Yeah. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. For the rest of our day. And we will. And we will praise you for the rest of our Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Our announcements are as follows. The website update 71441. Please opt in to the text alert system, PHDIM, for the messages concerning the ministry. Check our websites for announcements and updates, www.tphdim.org. Don't forget about your $200 seed in this restoration period. The Daniel fast has begun. We're in day 12 of the 21 days of consecration. Prayer is uh, every night at 6, except for Monday nights. You know it's at 7. Amen. Amen. Night of worship, Saturday, November the 15th. Amen. Amen. 7 p.m. Amen. Thanksgiving community dinner, November 27th. Amen. Time 12 to 3. You know everybody's welcome. You just can't take nothing with you. Amen. Amen. Consecration, November the 30th. Amen. Should be a great time. Amen. 6.30 p.m. Rehearsal for the consecration is November the 23rd at 6.30 p.m. Amen. 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 If you haven't been to prayer, you ought to come. It's been a blessing. Amen. It's a blessing to see the men stand up and pray. Amen. I don't know how many women blessed, was blessed by that, but I was definitely blessed by that. Amen. And, and, and uh, Elder Mo, I, I, I just believe your prayer going to come forth, that it's just the beginning. Amen. Amen. That, that they're all going to stand up to who they need to be. Amen. And I'm just going, we was praying for the jail, and, and I know God was doing something with the men, but I'm definitely going to ask those who have the heart to pray to definitely pray for the women's prison. Amen. Amen. And the ladies in the prison, because they're needing it right now as the enemy's trying to keep us out and where we're being effective. Wow. He's trying to destroy that. So lift us up. Amen. 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 And definitely lift them up in this season, because this is a horrible season for them right now. Yeah. Amen. But how many know God is faithful? How many know that the seeds that we've planted in there, we believe they'll be effective to carry them through? Amen. Amen. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. 
come before his presence with singing. Know and understand with approval that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and not we ourselves. And we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. God, we thank you. We bless your holy name. We thank you for being with us on this evening, oh God. We thank you for what you're already doing in this consecration season, oh God. That you're returning the hearts of the children back to the Father, God. We thank you, oh God, that you're melting away those hardened areas, oh God. That you're birthing out new things, oh God. That those that have been carrying babies for a long time, God. That the crowning has begun, God. And that the pushing has come forth, oh God. And that new things are being birthed in this season. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new, God. We thank you, oh God, for what you're doing, God. Allow us to stick together heart to heart and breast to breast, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we come against confusion, doubt, and fear, God. Anger and bitterness, God. It does not reside here, oh God. There's a freshness in the air, oh God. We receive it, oh God. We thank you for Elder Ron on tonight, oh God, as he bring forth the bread of life, oh God. We thank you that somebody's heart will be changed, oh God. That as he edify and builds up, God, as he tear down that which is not useful, oh God, as he builds that bridge, oh God, to salvation, oh God. We thank you, oh God, what you're doing in his life. Bless this worship ministry, oh God, to uh, break up any foul ground before the man of God comes. We declare this atmosphere is conducive for your spirit to move. Rest, rule, and abide in this place, and it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Somebody give God glory. Provider, defender, master of the universe, you know me, you are an awesome wonder, provider. You're my defender, master of the universe. You know me. You are an awesome wonder. Help me say, provider, defender, master of. You know me. You know me. You are. You are an awesome wonder. Set again, provider. Provider. Defender. Defender. Master of. Master of the universe. You know me. You know. You are, you are an awesome wonder. Sing it all. Oh 
Lift your hands in this sanctuary if you know he's an awesome wonder tonight. God, we reverence you because we know who you are. Yes, we do. You. We realize your words. Yes, sir. Awesome wonder. Oh, come on. Lift those hands tonight. Uh, We praise you, God, for your mighty acts, uh, for your marvelous works, huh? You an awesome wonder. Oh, come on. Yes, yes, sir. Thank you, Jesus. You are. Well, you do the things you do. Uh. Yes, God. Come on, say it again. Provider. Provider. A defender. defender. Oh, come on. Master of. Aren't you glad that you know me? Aren't you glad he knows you tonight? Huh? You are, you are an awesome wonder. Say it if you know it's provider. provider. Jehovah Jireh, defender. defender. You're the master of, master of, the of this universe. You know me. You know me. I know you are. You are an awesome wonder. Everybody open up your mouth and say, oh. Oh, come on. What a wonder. What a wonder. Think about it. 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 Oh. Say, God, you know me. You know me. You know my weakness. My weakness. You know just where I hurt the most. Oh, oh he does. He does. The most. That's why. That's why. I call you. Call you healer. Can you say that tonight? Oh, I'm glad that you know me. You know me. My weakness. my weakness, you know just where I hurt the most, where I hurt, where I hurt the, most. the most, that is why, That's why. I can call you, I call you healer. can you call him your healer tonight, sing it Oh, he's an awesome he 
said, well, does somebody need this? Oh! Oh! What a healer you are! I know I need it right now, huh? Because he's a healer tonight. Uh. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Uh. I need you right now in my body. Yes, yes. Uh. He knows uh, how deep that pain goes. He knows. But guess what? Uh, he knows you. Uh, and he wants to heal you. Uh. He's an awesome wonder. Yes, he is. Come on. Lift those hands and worship the awesome healer, uh, the awesome wonder, God, uh, his son Jesus shed his blood, come on, with his stripes on, you are already healed, uh, oh come on, he'll heal your mind, uh, he'll mend your broken heart, uh, he'll dry your tears from your eyes, uh, he will, uh, or whatever you need, uh, won't he will, uh, he'll do it, uh, he's awesome, 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 uh, open up your heart, uh, open up your mind, uh, let him heal you, uh, let him deliver you, uh, let him set you free, uh, Those chains that are binding you, uh, He'll drop them off right now, uh, The chains, he'll break them off right now. Come on, come on. Lift your hands, uh, Give it to Jesus, 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 uh, Whatever it is, give it to him, uh, Give it to him, uh, He's the same God uh, on a Wednesday night. Uh, he's the same God. Uh, give it to him. Uh, are you shackled by a heavy burden? Uh, beat the load of guilt and shame. Uh, the hand of Jesus. Uh, let him touch you. Uh, let him touch you right now. Uh, let him touch you right now. Uh, Say, God, lay your hands on me. I need a touch from you right now. I need a touch from you, Jesus. I need you. Oh, I need you to do what you do. He's a perfect God. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, oh. Lift your hands and worship him. Come on, yes, yes. Open up your mouth, come on. He showed up to bless you, yes he did. Come on, come on, come on. You ain't gotta carry it no more. You ain't gotta carry it no more. You have to carry it no more. Cast your care on him. Your care on him. Uh. Like a fisherman cast his net. Cast your care on him. Uh. He cares for you. Uh. He'll do it. Just say, Lord, 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 do it for me. Do it for me. Right now. God, do it for me. Do it for me right now. Right 
You got to untie God's hands. Come on. Let him do it. Let him do it. He's an awesome wonder. No one can do it like Jesus. No one can do it like Jesus. No one can do it like Jesus. Come on. Come on and let him have it. Let him have it. Let him have it. Everybody, open up your mouth and say, oh. It's okay to worship him. Yes, yes. He's the God of another chance. Come on, worship him. Yes. He's the God who understands. Yes. He knows and he sees. He cares about you and me. Aren't you glad that he knows? He sees. He cares. He cares about you and me. Yes, he does. Aren't you glad that he knows? He sees. He cares, yes, yes, about you and me. Oh, oh, I'm glad that he knows. Yes, he sees. He cares. Yes. Oh, come on. Yes, 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 yes. One more time, he knows. Yes, sir. And he sees. Yes. And he cares. Yes. He knows. He sees. He sees. He cares. Even when you can't trace him, he knows that he sees. Uh, oh, sometimes I feel like he ain't there. Say, where are you, God? Oh, he knows. He sees. He sees. Aren't you glad he cares? He cares. Oh, you ain't no surprise to him because he knows. He knows. He knows. He sees. He sees. He God cares. He cares. He cares. About you and me, he knows. he knows. What you're going through, he sees. 
Where you been? He cares. He cares. He knows. He sees. He cares. Oh, yes, he does. I, oh, that makes me feel good that he knows. He knows. Sees. He sees. Cares. He Jesus knows. He knows. He sees. He cares. He cares. Hallelujah. 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 He knows. Said he knows. Father God, we thank you that you see, you know, and you care. Lord, we come tonight believing your report that you will never leave us nor forsake us. And on tonight, Lord, I ask that you would use me for your service that you would let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. God, give me the words to say that might bring peace, healing, and deliverance to your people. We thank you in advance for the victory that has already won, God. Lord, we bless you for keeping us when we couldn't keep ourselves. And we pray this prayer in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen. Come on, clap your hands and give him some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, bless his name. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. If you're glad he kept you, I dare you to make some noise in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe it was Rodney Bryant that wrote that song. He's a keeper. Yes, sir. yes he is. Hallelujah. I'm so glad that's, that's so, so in line with tonight's message. He will keep your mind in perfect peace. Hallelujah. When life come to beat up on you, He'll keep you. Hallelujah. 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 Give me a little bit more mic for Elder. Just the fader. Just raise it up a little bit more. Hallelujah. Give me some more. Give me some more. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Can you all hear me? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, we are glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen, somebody. Where I come from, we used to sing a song that says, I'm glad to be in the service. One more, time. One more time. He didn't have to let me live. But I'm glad to be in the service. One more time. Hallelujah. One more chance to get it right. One more chance to allow his grace and his mercy to keep me. Hallelujah. Amen. We give God praise for this opportunity. We bless the bishop on tonight. 
for his leadership and his love and support. Hallelujah to you, my brothers and sisters. I bless you tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. Won't be long tonight. We're going to get right into this. Hallelujah. Isaiah 40, 28. <laughs> I'm going to dive right into this. Has thou not known? Has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is he weary? There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be wearied. And they shall walk and not faint. I got to read this next part. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength and they shall mount up with wings as eagles and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I, I just feel like I had to read that again because yeah, you guys got quiet right there because how many of you know that sometimes life will make you feel like uh, there's, there's no hope, everything is you just at your end. But how many of you know that if you have faith, I wish I had a praying church right there. That you don't have to worry about what's in front of you. You can keep on stepping, keep on moving, keep on pushing, keep on pressing. Hallelujah. Y'all will get with it in a minute. Uh, take me to James 1 and 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive a crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them that love him. Amen. For a title I, I, I will share with you. I'm determined to stay faithful. I'm determined to stay faithful. No matter what comes my way, no matter what life brings, no matter how it looks, how it feels, no matter what, what I might be taking my own self through, I'm determined. You're determined to do what? Stay faithful to God, number one, and stay faithful to the ministry, number two. I wish somebody would say amen if you believe that tonight. Hallelujah. So we look at that verse in Isaiah he just try, he's trying to help us understand that when it looks crazy and things are not making sense don't try to even understand it but believe and know that the one that created the heavens and the earth is still in control. The one that placed the stars in the sky and called out to the darkness, let there be light. He's still working it out for your good. Uh, 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 when, 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 when you are faced to look at things that look impossible, if you can just have that faith to believe that that He can do the impossible, I got about two or three people that believe that tonight. But if you would just reflect on the situations in your life when you know that had it not been for Jesus it will quickly bring you back around and make you realize that God has his hand not on just me but on every situation 
that I'm going through. Uh, uh, well, just, just reflect with me for a few minutes. Uh, you, you, knew, you know that there was not enough money in the bank account to pay the bill. Uh, you know that they called you from uh, the, the car place. You know that they called you about your lights. You know that they called you uh, about paying uh, the bill uh, on the veteran. But, but somehow, the money showed up. Somehow, the bill was paid. Somehow, an extension was given. And what looked impossible was not a problem for Jesus. It didn't even phase him. Matter of fact, we know what it said in Jeremiah. He knows, he knows, he knows, he knows already. He already knows. So, so when, when it feels like the enemy is coming, understand that he cannot do anything without his permission, number one. So when evil shows up, he knows what's going to happen uh, at the end from the beginning. He already knows. Ah. So I'm glad that when I read this scripture, that even though I might feel like fainting, I might feel like falling out, I might feel like giving up, I don't really even have to worry about that. If I could just have enough faith to believe that he's working it out on my behalf everything will be alright mm. so turn, turn, turn with me uh, uh, put it up on Revelations 2 and 10 maybe, 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 maybe this might help somebody fear none of, fear none of those things which thou shall suffer Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye might be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. But thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Understand here what's happening. Understand her. You can take it down. Uh, 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 it, it is certain that we are going to go through trials and tribulations. We're going to have problems. We're going to, we're going to feel some, some pressure from the enemy. That's his job. If he's not bothering you, that means that you're not a threat to the kingdom or to his kingdom. Uh, uh, if he's not causing havoc in your life, if, he, if he's not uh, uh, causing uh, uh, you some type of discomfort, I, I, I would question that you might want to walk a little different. Uh, you might want to take a look at how you're walking because I'm wise enough and old enough to know that if you're not walking with God, you're walking with the devil. So here, the, it, it tells me that, that uh, along this road uh, that you might even feel like the devil has put you into prison. You might feel some tribulations, and in that particular script, that text there said for ten days. I don't know. I don't know how long you've been dealing with what you're dealing with. Could have been ten minutes, ten hours, ten days. Some of us even ten years. You know how long you've been suffering. How long you've been fighting the same problem that you thought you was delivered from. The same thoughts that you thought you had overcome. That's how the devil do you. He try to trip you up. And he keeps bringing it back to you to see how you're going to react. Oh, I wish somebody would believe that tonight. But let me help you out. When you get in those types of positions... You have to do number one. This is my first point. You got to stay in the trenches. And that's not a time to give up. So we, 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 we know that that's the enemy that's coming against us when, when we keep repeating the same problem. When we keep repeating the same habit. 
we know that's the enemy tricking us. And the one thing that I wrote down here in my notes to remember that the, that the devil comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Nothing new. It's his same plan. Every opportunity he get for the believer and for those that have a relationship with Jesus. It's the same plan. He's trying to steal your dreams, kill your joy, destroy your peace, steal your relationship, kill your love level, destroy the opportunity that you have to get closer with Jesus. He comes to steal your walk and your testimony. He comes to kill your relationship that you have with your fellow saints and Christian believers. He comes to destroy the happiness that comes when you think about what Jesus has done for you. But if we know the word of God, we could believe in Philippians 4 and 13 where it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. See, see, sometimes when we get caught up or when we get in these jams, we forget that we're not by ourselves. But I'm so glad that he's right there to give me strength when I'm feeling weak. I'm so glad that I can believe the report of the Lord. I don't have to uh, worry about uh, looking at the, the report that the devil has given me about what he's done to my neighbor or what he's done to me just last week. I can re believe the report of the Lord because why? Because he's done it for me before. I wish I had somebody that was excited about him doing it before. <laughs> I'm preaching to myself right there. So if he did it for me before, not only is he able, but he's faithful to do it for me again. So if I know that, then, 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 then Proverbs 3 and 5 tells me this. To trust in the Lord with all my heart and lean not unto my own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct my path. I don't have to go off and do it on my own. I don't have to try to fix it on my own because he is in control. Hallelujah. So glad that he's in control. And just in case, you know, you, you, you know, sometimes you, 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 I don't know about you, maybe it's just me. I don't, I don't doubt his power. I don't doubt his ability. I just get weary when it takes a little longer than what I want. You know, sometimes when you got to wait a little longer than what you want to, it can shake you up a little bit. You got to keep looking at this situation and you can't make out when it's going to happen. And you just keep waiting. You keep waiting. Because he said he promised he would never leave me. So I know I'm not here by myself, but I, why must I wait so long? You just have to believe and know that he's getting ready to do it on your behalf.
and, and see this, and, 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 and when it happens, when it happens, when it happens, notice I say, when it happens, because we know he can do it, we know he's able, so when it happens, we got to make sure that we're in the right posture. Oh, I wish I had somebody that understood that, that, that you, you, you got to be in the right posture to receive his blessings and to receive his, 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 his miracle and his grace and his mercy. Because if you're off doing something else, you'll miss it. And you'll be in this situation longer than what you were supposed to be because you weren't in the posture to receive it. So I say, whatever you're facing right now, look to the hills from which cometh your help and know that your help comes from the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm so glad that I don't have to keep looking at my situation, but I can look to Jesus. While I'm waiting on him, I can look, I can look to him because when I seek him, when I see him, I, I see that my situation is changing. Oh, we, we, we know what Bishop has taught us. When you focus on a thing, it becomes bigger. So instead of focusing on my problem and focusing on Jesus, I can't, if I'm focusing on him, I don't even realize that I got a problem anymore. Ah. Uh, but when you're not focused on him, it'll cause you to go into a panic. It'll cause you to accept anything that the devil say to you. We know that scripture. You believe anything. So number two, I, I want to say to you, God's never said to retreat. Why you going through? Why you why you why you in this battle? Why you in this fight? Why you feeling uncomfortable? Don't don't give up. Don't retreat. Don't give it to the enemy. Remember, he's right there with you. And, and, and matter of fact, I like what it says in Isaiah 40 and 10. It says, Behold, the Lord God will come with strong hand, and his arm shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and he his work before him. Uh, look, look here. Let me let me help you out. <laughs> it's tight. It's uncomfortable, and I feel pressure. But I know that God can do this in a twinkling of an eye. So I do. I, I, you know. You, you know. Uh, Donald Lawrence wrote that song, encourage yourself. You got to encourage yourself in the Lord with, your, with the word of God. And you got to, when, when you feeling this pressure, when you feeling this uncomfortable uh, feeling, or, or when, you, when you feeling like you in a jam, you got to go back to the word of God and, and get something out of the word to get you back in the right posture, Amen. That's why it says that we don't have to fear none of these things. We don't have to fear nothing. If we know and believe that he's going to bring us out, what kind of God would let you suffer and not bring you out? What, what, what kind of God would do that? I remember when I was doing my studying on the different religions and <clears throat> particular conversation and study came up that at a certain time for a woman in the Islamic faith or belief that when she becomes on her mistrum she cannot go to her, her God because she's unclean. What kind of God would refuse his own? Not a 
God that I would serve. In spite of what my physical condition is. Let alone what my mind is going through. Because see, we can watch this up and make it smell good. But if somebody that was sitting next to you really knew what you was thinking about, or your thoughts are not pleasing and not as fresh as you would like for them to be. So I'm glad that God does not put a stipulation on when he's going to do something for me based on how I'm acting or how I'm smelling. Because we know if, if we did it on attitude alone, some of us are in trouble. Your attitude ain't always pleasant. If we did it on based on how we paid our tithes and gave our offering, some of us would be in trouble. If we did it on how, how, how well we showed our love to our fellow man, some of us would be in trouble. But I'm so glad he's merciful. That when I'm acting funky, he still allowed grace and mercy to come and get me together. So glad. my word of point here so when we allow our minds to be locked up in prison because we used our money the wrong way now we can't receive the blessing of God because we didn't messed up our tithes I know y'all saying why he on tithe tonight I don't know why I'm on tithe tonight that's just what God gave me Maybe he, maybe he convicted somebody. I, I don't know. That ain't my business. That's between you and him. So I'm going to beg you to get it right. Hallelujah. Your children are walking around in prison in their minds. Not able to break free from the, the world's foolishness. you and your spouse have put your own selves in prison because of a disagreement but I'm so glad that God does not allow us to stay in that place his love for us will not allow us to stay in that place So, what are you saying now? Don't be afraid when you get in that place, but don't stay in that place. I'm reminded that when Jesus went to the cross, that even though it looked like it was uh, uh, over, that death could not even get victory because Jesus raised himself up. See, y'all, I'm a praying for some of y'all. Some of you, that, that, I, I, I know I ain't here to pump and pride nobody, but that right there should have made somebody move. Because the wages of one sin is death, so we all was a candidate to be dead right now. But Jesus' blood paid. for your foolishness and my foolishness. Amen. Which brings me to my third point. You need to know what to do when it gets dark in your life. Hallelujah, somebody. 
David helps us out in this familiar passage that we all love to hear read. Psalms 23 and 4 say, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff comforts me. When it's dark, he's still right there. When it's dark, we can look at Psalms 119 and 105 that says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my pathway. Yeah, it's dark, but I got something that liveth on the inside. That when I speak it, it causes the darkness to fade away and his, he shines from the inside. Hallelujah. So I can rejoice knowing that my situation is going to change because there's something on the inside They're working on the outside. The old folks said it brought about a change in my life. I'm so glad that when I, when, I, when I think about his goodness, I wish I had somebody who knew this tonight. When I think about his goodness, I can't stay in the same state that I'm in. It won't let me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hear all these songs in my head. That's why I got to keep on moving. <laughs> Hallelujah. When I'm weak, he's strong. We read where it says, he, he gives strength to the weak. Hallelujah. Know about you. When I just examined the last 24 months to the, from today, there's been times where I needed strength. Oh, thank you, Jesus. There's been times where I, 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 I could have I could have just walked on down 75 and just gave it all up. I mean, I had some legitimate reasons to say bump it. I mean, I had some, some, some serious situations that swept up where I could say, you know what? Can, can I be me for a minute? Minister Carla preached a sermon a couple of days ago and said, you know, it's because of my faithfulness or because of the work that I do here at the church that has kept me or that's keeping me. And, and, and I believe that 100% because I spend too much time here at this church working for the ministry that when things happen, I would be, I don't even know where the crazy house is, but I'd probably be in the crazy house if God didn't do it. But I believe because of the work that I do for him, I know it's been him that kept me in my right mind. And then I think, I think about, you know, you know <laughs> I, I'm, a, I'm a testimony tonight because I believe that the things that I went through, if it was somebody else, they wouldn't be able to go through it. I believe that. I believe that because I look at other people's story and I'm like, ooh, if I had to go through that, Jesus. Amen. Jesus. But he gives you strength. When you feel like giving up, I don't know who I'm talking to tonight, but I, you know, I just, I, I thank God that, that, that even this week, 
I'm looking and I'm reading in the paper. And I'm reading about what they're going to do about the officer that shot the boy in Missouri. The parents, then, they then went all the way to the UN to speak to the UN about the situation. But I, I can't even imagine what I would have done had it been my child. Everybody in here that know me know. When it comes to my Maya Paya and my Taylor. Whew, I gotta take a deep breath right there. So I can't imagine somebody still walking around, breathing. And mine is has been eulogized and buried. I can't imagine. But 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 as I say, I can't imagine. In the same breath, I can imagine that Jesus has got to be real. For them still be in their right mind. For them still to be speaking peace. I'm talking about real stuff here. This is real stuff. The boy right here in our city at the Walmart, his parents Jesus is real. Because it takes Jesus to keep you in a situation like that. And I'm speaking from a father's standpoint. I can't imagine about a mama. Someone that has birthed, that has carried this child. That stayed up all night. That when, when nobody else would or could, they had to be there. And now, the precious thing It, 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 you have to be determined to be faithful when it comes to strong situations like that. I don't know what your issue has been. I don't know what your problem has been. I don't know what you're going through right now, your test. I don't know what your trial, your tribulation is, but you got to be able to stay faithful. So why can't we get people to do what they're supposed to do in the ministry? If God has been faithful to you and you expect him to be faithful. I don't understand. He wakes you up every morning. Most of us have the activity of our limbs and we're able to move and do what we need to do throughout the day, but you won't even come to service. And some of us don't even come to service on time. That's from this back wall all the way over there. And we wonder why. Don't show up to choir rehearsal. I'm an elder, so I can preach this right here and not be rebuked because it's the truth. Saturday morning prayer. Help with fish and loaves. show up doing 52 days of restoration. But 
we expect God to do his part. In my mind, in my spirit, I hear, I just hear God saying, when he was talking to the disciples, and he asked them to pray for an hour, and they couldn't do it. They, they, some of them fell asleep. Stuff that is required of us, we, we just, we drop the ball and find an excuse for why we didn't do it. There is no excuse. What if, what if Jesus gave you an excuse? Boy, it's quiet in here. My God today. But he don't do us like we do him. He continues to show up to work on our behalf, continue to make ways out of no ways. And every time the devil comes to test us, he always right there beside us. Sometimes just waiting on us to give it to him. And other times just waiting on us to call his name. But most of the time, he just takes care of it knowing that we can't handle it on our own. So in 1 Peter 4, 12 and 13, it says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering that when his glory shall be revealed ye may be glad also with exceeding joy what you saying what you saying you, you should rejoice get excited when stuff look crazy and stuff start acting up because you know that God is going to be right there in that at the end of this thing God is going to get some joy. Oh, I wish I had somebody in here who believed that tonight. Going to get some joy out of your situation. Yeah, your, your trials come to make us strong, but, but understand for some of us, if we didn't ever go through nothing, we, we'll forget about Jesus. Well, why do you say that, Elder? Because you don't read your Bible every day. Because you don't pray every day. If it wasn't for him allowing temptation and trials and tribulation to come that way, you wouldn't even call on him. So sometimes he has to make it a little, or allow it to be a little uncomfortable. I'm just so glad that I got enough sense to realize that no matter what my situation is, no matter what come my way, I still believe that he's able to do it. That's why I'm determined to stay faithful. Because I don't care who don't show up. I ain't just talking about it. It's at least 90% of y'all could be a testimony and know that I don't care. I do it by myself if I'm able to do it. I come by myself if I got to get, make sure it's done. Why? Because it ain't about me. It's about God. I refuse to let God down. I refuse. I was talking to a coworker the other day, and I'm about to be about to close. And I was just sharing with him. I said, "You know what? 
There's no way I could stand here today and not be a witness for Jesus. I'm at work talking to my coworkers and they say, well, why are you you know, why you spend so much time at the church and why you why do you do? I said, because I said, I said, it's real simple. I said, I, I I can give it to you from 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 a straight at you point of view where you can't have no misunderstandings about what I'm saying. I can count at least five times I know I was supposed to have been dead. I know at least five that I can remember. And I'm, you know, I might have, it might be, you know how you said you got danger seen and unseen. And I'm sure there was probably some other times. But I'm talking about I was in my right mind, saw it with my own eyes. I was at death's door. Diggy Nate, the man had the gun to my head. Let me tell you how foolish I am. <laughs> I could talk about me like this. Because, the, because somebody, in, somebody that, that, that probably just would have panicked and just, you know, just went crazy. I only moved the gun away. He put the gun back up to me, and I'm studying moving the gun away, talking to my man, move the gun. Not even paying attention, not looking in this man's face and realizing that he is under the influence of hair round right now. I'm looking at him, just fanning again, you know, not not really examining what's going on. I just all I know is he got this this three fifty seven now. I'm moving it. And it wasn't until after all this went down, and you know, then he didn't left and you know, flee the scene and, and I realized, and, you know. And I'm thinking, this man just had a gun to my head. And me with my silly self, I'm just telling him to move the gun and I'm slapping the gun away. And before I knew it, I just started shouting around the house. Because all I could think about, God, you did it again. I, I'm not even paying attention to the devil trying to take me out. That was just one situation. And, it, it, and for those of you, you know, I, I you know, I, I ain't got to brag. I ain't got to. But th for those of you that don't believe this is a true story, you can go ask Pastor John. Because he know the joker that did it. I'm just telling you how God watch out and take care of his own. I mean, three different car accidents. This is why I'm determined to be for three different car accidents. All three of the cars total were the two cars in the one truck. I'm still here. That last one wasn't a pretty situation at all. I mean, you know, it, it wasn't good, but, but I'm still here to let somebody know that God can do the impossible. I don't care how bad it looks. He can do it. Whatever your situation is today, don't allow your situation to dictate your outcome. 
Stay determined to be faithful. First of all with God and second of all with the ministry. I don't care what it looks like to you. Jesus is able to bring you through. Everybody's standing. And if I haven't said anything to you that moved you or that caused you to think tonight, just reflect on those things that looked impossible in your life. And remember that had it not been for Jesus, your situation might be different. But I'm so glad that he didn't give up on me.